gonna like ask you about prospects, but Thank I was you. gonna ask you like, like <laughs> I haven't gotten into it. Like I, I know like five guys right now. Yeah. Yeah, like I like I uh watched some Alex Cyrus, like, yeah, that's not happening. He's gonna be the first overall pick. I'm not even yeah. gonna get my hopes up. <laughs> uh yeah. but Mike, what's it? Go ahead. Oh, my question was like we've seen Troy go best player available. Do you think he would go for fit this year? I'll do you one better. I think they trade it. Ooh, okay. How many more? Like, how many more? This is what we all, the consensus is this is the weakest draft in the top 10. Like, there are people that like this draft from, like, 15 to 30, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you hear. There's, like, it's just, like, in terms of potential star power. Say the Pistons land pick one or two. Like, how many more young guys do you need? Like, especially this draft class is weak. And there's maybe another team out there, like, in Atlanta that might be pivoting to a rebuild. Like, I'd trade the pick, pick up one, pick up a good player and a pick in the in the teens and go from there personally. That's what I would do. I wouldn't I wouldn't draft. And again, I haven't done my draft. I haven't done my deep dive on the draft. So maybe that changes as I watch some guys more closely. But I like the I like a lot of the young guys this Pistons team has. Like I like obviously Cade, Ivy, Durham, Asar, Stu, like Sasser. There's there's a lot of young guys to develop. Like, how many more do you need? Like, that's why they're in this predicament they're in now, right? They just kept drafting and drafting. And they, they got You look up and they got nine 24-year-old or younger guys. So i trade the pick personally, get a proven guy, uh, like a B-lister. I, I don't know if the number one pick or two pick in this draft gets you an A-lister, but if you can get a B-lister and another pick, that's where my mind would go. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought a little bit of, like, diving into the draft. Like, one guy – uh, that I really like that's at Baylor right now is Jacoby uh, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like next to Kate, he would just be an ideal fit. <laughs> it's just like a, a guard that can, you know, create his own offense and stuff like that. But we draft another guard. I don't want to be on Twitter. <laughs> that's I, good, I you know don't. what I'm saying? Like they've <laughs> they've drafted enough over the last four years. Like if you can get I something really good don't. with that pick, you got I think it's time to pull the trigger. I would do it. And I'm looking, I mean, there's some nice wings in this draft, too, that maybe you could trade down, like you said. Maybe you don't want, yeah. like, maybe you do get, like, you know, anywhere from one one through three, or you get fifth like you do every year. Um, like, what if, this is hypothetical, what if pick four got you Jeremy Grant and, like, pick 15? Oh, I think fans would take that all day. Would you? Uh, I would because... And we can insert player here. I just like I said, like a B lister type player. I think is what a top five pick in this draft will get you. I don't think it would get you an A lister. Yeah, like I, I think Portland kind of regrets giving him that contract. Yeah, because it's a big contract. But I mean, I think Jeremy Grant to me would be the type of wing that the Pistons actually like, like want, and it it would be a good wing for a star to learn under. Mm -hmm. Um. Which I'm not going to get my hopes up because I thought we were getting Jeremy Grant this past summer and it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also, yeah, I, I, like I think there was interest there, but I think the Pistons were aware of the type of money Jeremy was going to get and told him yeah. to go get his bag. That's what his agent told me to. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's go like, yeah, he bag. wants to get paid. You know? So it's like, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't blame him. Doubt he's signing for $20 million contracts anymore. Yeah. I agree. He could get that one big. Get the big life changing deal. I mean, it's all life changing money, but you know what I mean. Like the one hundred million dollar deal, where if you want to wrap it up after this contract, you can go off into the sunset. Someone said marking in for a top five pick. I haven't seen that a lot. Which I like Lori, but I don't know if a team, the Pistons might do it, but I don't know if like a team in the top five would do that. I'll say this about the Lori stuff. And I'm curious to see how it plays out. There are a lot of people in the NBA who don't think that the Jazz are trying to actually trade Laurie, Laurie Markin. No, it's just Danny Ainge on his BS. I think so, too. And also, to me, it's like, why trade him? They're rebuilding. You have a 25-year-old stretch four who's averaging 20 points a game. Like, those are the guys you rebuild for. Yeah. I, I think you we'll see that that's a lot of smoke from, from Utah. I've asked people around. I've asked around, like, you think you might be able to, like, what do you think's going on with Laurie? They're like, I don't think Ainge is actually going to trade him. I've gotten that from a couple teams. I don't think John Collins gets traded again before Laurie does. Oh, yeah. I think – yeah, I'm not a big John Collins fan. Um, I But I definitely 
think Utah is willing, ready to move on from that. But I mean, they got him for so cheap, like it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah, I mean, like why draft Taylor Hendricks and then trade for John Collins? It's just madness. Yeah, that was especially if you're rebuilding, like give Hendricks the minutes. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like like we're talking about with the Pistons, letting somebody who's proven play and the 15 wins. Even though you're rebuilding, it feels better than the three wins. Even though you're playing way more young guys. Yeah, it's it, it's honestly crazy. And like I was looking back at this draft class, this is probably the one draft class that, in recent memory that I've seen a lot of them get sent down to the G League. Like I can't remember yeah. the last time I've seen a draft class where I think everyone outside of Asar and maybe a couple others have actually had like G League assignment. Like Jarese Walker is like living in the G League right now. Yep, Cam Whitmore. Yeah, it's. Yep. It's interesting. It's good. It's a lot of good teams in the league, though, too. That's another thing. Like, it's a lot of good teams. There's only three historically bad teams, possibly, but the rest are like regular, like blah to like really, really good. There's a lot of good talent in the league. <laughs>